Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Tuesday. LeBron James does something he has never done before, and that's saying something as the Lakers take game four and go up 3-1 against Memphis. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everyone for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. It's always going to be free. It's never going to be behind a paywall. And Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you can go to see the show, um, participate uh, in it, leave comments, leave questions, be part of that show. And most importantly, you get to hang out with a community of Lakers fans and NBA fans about 16,000 strong. Uh, so we appreciate all the support that we are getting over there. Want to let everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um, the Lakers, Woo. Andy. Woo. That game four Woo. at the crib. <laughs> On Monday, it was ugly, it was mean, it was physical, it was tough, and it was a huge, like, grit, heart win for the Lakers uh, in overtime, 117-111. They are up 3-1, to one, and man alive, did they earn that one on Monday. Look, for all of the ugliness of this game, and there was a lot of it, Brian, and we are going to get into it, it was also a really tense, exciting game. And to be honest, I mean, I think most of the YouTube watchers know I typically have a cup of tea during this show. I'm a big tea drinker. I switched to Reposado <laughs> for this show. I salute everyone. Uh, so let me tell you guys Ooh. what I really think about the Lakers. I mean, this this game was a legit nail biter in part because you were, at least we were, everybody listening to the show was wanting the Lakers to win this thing, pull it out, wondering if they could in this absolute slugfest. It was also tense because, quite frankly, Brian, I was worried that a player wouldn't survive. I mean, the refs were absolutely just letting these players kick the crap out of each other. I mean, th this was basically the attitude. It was Ivan Drago. If he dies, he dies. I mean, like, and it was on both sides. They were letting both teams play and in a way that I have not seen, honestly, in a playoff game in a long time. It was uh, jarring. I, I thought, yeah, when Desmond Bain came out of the third row turnbuckle and took out, took out Rui Hachimura, that was a, a big turning point in the game. I, you know, it, it's this one's starting. We you got to talk about Anthony Davis, you got to talk about D'Angelo Russell. There's a lot of stuff to get into with this game. You got to talk about the Lakers taking a 3 1 lead, um, in something that if they had lost, uh, given how much energy it took to win that game, could have profoundly <laughs> changed the arc of this series. But winning is better, it, much better. Winning is definitely better. Um, we got to start with LeBron James though, because Oof. it was not a an elegant game from LeBron because elegance was not allowed <laughs> from anyone in, in, in Monday night's game four. But when you start breaking down impressive moments from LeBron, impressive games, games that you will remember uh, when you kind of break down his remarkable career, it stands out and it says something that a game where he only went 8 of 18 from the floor and scored 22 points is as remarkable as it is. He finishes with 22 points, 20 rebounds, his first 20-rebound game, seven assists, oldest man in NBA history to go for 20 and 20. Um, but Andy, when some of those 22 points came, is, is just as significant. Clutch baskets driving to the hoop on a night where that was not exactly an easy place to get to. No, he, he drove to the rack to hit a basket to send the game into overtime, and that was a tough shot over Jaron Jackson Jr. 
it was basically an impossible angle that LeBron talked about after the game. I thought and that was fascinating. Listening to him it, break that down. It, it, for, for people that have either the ability to watch the games on Spectrum Sportsnet and then watch Access, uh, Access uh, Lakers, Access Sportsnet after these games, um, hearing LeBron break down basketball is awesome. Like it really, truly is amazing to hear a guy that smart and that great at just explaining basketball. I mean, that was something you and I used to talk about covering Kobe. Kobe was incredible when he was in the mood to at just explaining the game and yep. breaking it down in ways that are both digestible and fascinating. But LeBron talked about how he practices – Essentially, layups at like three different three different off zones. Line. There's yeah, the zone zones. one, which is a normal layup. Mm -hmm. There's which is below the box, basically a zone two, which is in the square. And this was zone three over Jaron Jackson Jr., the defensive player of the year, which is for above the box. And he practices all of this stuff and deploys it based, as he said on the shot blocker and there is no better shot blocker. I mean, if you go, I mean, you've seen that everyone has seen the clip. The Royal you has seen the clip. I know Jaron Jackson jr. Was way up in the air to try to block this shot. Um, that sent the game into overtime, but you're right. Andy, just listening to him break that down when asked, you know, is this the highest you've gone off the glass? He's like, no, I practiced this. I did it in the finals a couple of years, you know, a few years against kids. Like it's, it's, it really is a treat. But also, too, he was talking, I mean, in terms of what LeBron did defensively, he had mm. two blocks. He had two charges against Ja Morant. And I know LeBron's a hell of a lot bigger than Ja, but taking a charge from Ja with that type of force and elevation at age 38, that ain't fun either. I mean, he, no. he was – you could see just how badly – LeBron won in this game and and the entire Lakers team played their asses off. They played really hard. They didn't always play well, but they played really hard, but nobody on that team wanted it more than LeBron. Just like And really and, and the cap it. yeah. And the capper I thought Andy for LeBron and obviously I think for Lakers fans came in the overtime when Dylan I made him go left. Brooks um LeBron went one on one against Brooks, drew the foul, got the and one, and just the the release of energy, the scream to the crowd was awesome. And you know that was the the play that you know LeBron he called it. You know it's game's not over there, but that's essentially the dagger. And you know there's a release that comes with that, and to do that against Dylan Brooks, who again. You know, certainly struggled offensively. Only three of nine. At least he limited his shot taking, um, <laughs> much to my chagrin. Um, much to Laker you know, he, chagrin. He sent he sent uh, Dylan Brooks back to the the team bus once again without speaking to the media. And somehow, Andy, somehow, I feel like Dylan Brooks would have had something to say had Memphis managed to win that game. So yeah, uh, yeah. We'll probably get more into this for Wednesday's show, but John Morant also did not speak after this game. I don't know who else on the team declined media. I, kn I know Desmond Bain did just because – I mean, Desmond Bain talked just because I've seen quotes from Desmond Bain. But putting aside whatever questions of professionalism, this could be a sign that a very young, very emotional and often temperamental team could be unraveling which means the Could Lakers be. need to make sure they are continuing to step down and press the right buttons because it's easy to picture them coming apart, Memphis. Look, and we'll see what happens. In, Not in, saying they will, but it's no, easy to picture sure. it. But there, there are some repercussions, I think, for the way this game, both the way this game was played, how tired the Lakers were physically, um, and – the fact that they won and the luxury that provides that uh, we will certainly get into, I think, more deeply on Wednesday's show, something for the for the everydayers to look forward to uh, as you make us your first listen. Uh, next, thing do, let's talk about AD and D'Lo because these are two guys who had 
big impacts on this game in ways that were uh, memorable, both really good and really bad, and uh, ultimately were, were, were critical for the Lakers pulling out the win. So we'll do that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Game Time. And years ago, some friends of mine and I, we wanted to go see LL Cool J in LA at the House of Blues that no longer exists. And it was at the very last minute, and we didn't know how to get tickets, so we got them from a scalper, and it turns out they were fake. Uh, through just some Same random guy sold you Hendrix tickets. <laughs> so, <laughs> I should have known <laughs> that that one that, that one was on you. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, a two for one, you can't turn it down. Um, True. through some just random luck, ended up in the show. But I said, I'm never dealing with that again. And you don't have to because game time exists, it's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports and music and comedy shows and theater near you. And it's got killer. Deals on last minute tickets uh, and the best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun. And I love how they offer images of seat views, and that's important. There's nothing worse than a bad angle. Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job protection, job loss protection. The game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. You find tickets in the same section, the row for less, game time will credit you 110%. Of the difference. It's a reason they are the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, tickets go directly to your phone and you're set. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked on NBA for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by FanDuel, Andy. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays. They're back. You know why? Because people are playing baseball again. And there's no better place to get in on the Major League Baseball action than FanDuel. That's America's one sports book. That's because right now new customers can step up to the plate. See what they did there. With a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. You sign up, you place your first bet, and you get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. And, you know, look, you could be betting on Aaron Judge picking up with home runs. Max Muncy for the Dodgers is hitting like three home runs a game, it seems like right now. Maybe you're maybe you're 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 looking for that kind of stuff. You're picking the over on strikeouts. No, the under on ground balls. What you really should should be picking is the under Andy on the length of game because man these things are flying by good job baseball so don't miss out on your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up FanDuel the official partner of Major League Baseball um, the other two I think big characters after you get past LeBron for the Lakers in this game were D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis neither one of them played um, uniformly good games. Anthony Davis was particularly ineffective offensively, um, three of fourteen on on the night. I mean, three buckets for Anthony Davis is not good. Um, mm-hmm. To his credit, it's Dylan was, Brooks-esque. <laughs> it is. <laughs> to his credit, um, he was he was doing work on the other end. Oh yeah, um, he was. It, it's not like Anthony Davis wasn't engaged in Monday's game. But he was very ineffective offensively. D'Angelo Russell was, um, he has been up and down, we, we shall say, over the course of the postseason. And as he has had some really awful mind bending plays, but there were two sequences in this game, particularly in the fourth quarter when he th- hit three, uh, three threes in a row for the Lakers, nine straight points, where he essentially carried the Lakers offensively on a night where they had trouble scoring. And I, I just thought these these games. It was you know a little like Game Seven, you know of the you know Lakers Celtics 2010. Obviously not the same stakes, but watching people find ways to do things on nights on a night where imperfection is kind of the only option. Nobody's doing anything well enough to. But, you know, D'Lo with those little floaters in the lane at the beginning of the third quarter kind of carried the Lakers offensively, comes back with those threes late in the game. And for a guy who's, you know, you know, Lakers fans not sold on him, I think, quite yet as a postseason presence at the very least, and somebody who's going to be a, a free agent in the offseason. Well, he has not been was, to be 
perfectly Nicola. honest, a great postseason player, D'Angelo, no. over the course of his career. And to the to the point where you start to wonder, is there something about the way he plays, about his style that makes him less effective in in, in a playoff type, um, you know, physical style, more scouting, shorter benches, whatever. It was it was cool to see that maneuver work out for D'Lo, where Darvin Ham put him back in the game. Um, Lakers Twitter screaming at Ham to put Hachimura back in, given how Russell had played. And uh, to say the least, D'Angelo justified <laughs> the confidence that Ham was showing him. Yeah, I mean, Darvin Ham said after the game, straight up, we don't win this game without D'Angelo Russell. I mean, he he went out of his way during the press conference unsolicited to make sure to note that D'Lo during that period when the, the offense just couldn't get anything going, he put them on his back. And that is the truth. Like he, he had some really bad plays in this game. He had a terrible and one that he allowed Jaron Jackson Jr. When he was basically trying to reach foul on him around the basket, like you either need to concede it or wrap him. Hack. Um, and this is like, right. And, the, and, the, and this came off D'Lo missing a wide open three off a really, really good pass from Reeves. He had two instances where he put up three-pointers on second-chance opportunities with 14 seconds on the clock. I mean, basically, the minute the ball hit his hands, he put it up. These were not good shots. Um, he, you know, he was up and down in this game, but D'Lo is a guy that he will always – He'll always look for these opportunities. I mean, he's an he is he's an aggressive player, and he is an alpha male personality. And maybe sometimes that alpha maleness gets him out over his skis as a player, or you know, as a personality, whatever. But he is somebody that will. He's not afraid to take big shots. Like Delo oh, no. is not. He is not afraid to be there in these moments and. You need guys like that. You need guys like that that will actually come through. But the first step is having guys like that. And he is absolutely one of them. And he he saved the Lakers. They don't get to overtime without those shots. They just don't. No. And, you know, even the ones that he ended up missing before he fouled out, you know, he missed – it was – I think it was two threes on one possession. He had, you know, a chance. And then, you know, D'Lo – as you t- texted at me, D'Lo loves himself a a uh, offensive rebound quick three with 14 seconds left. On the he, shot he, he treats him like a bogo sale, man. <laughs> he well, is he not turning do this. him down. Yep. Um, so you know he he missed those, but just even the, but the attention that he was then getting and the you know the 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 scrambling off the offensive rebounds and the respect whatever opened up space for Anthony Davis to, to, you know, offensive rebounds and stuff like that. So the Lakers desperately needed something to open up the floor just a little bit. And it was only sort of temporary because Lakers, you know, obviously struggled to, uh, to put the ball in the basket, but um, he really did come through. In, we just in gave him more way. life. At, he gave him more yeah. life at that point. Like they needed it, as a team to see the yeah. ball go in the basket. It was uh, it was really hard for the Lakers to score. Um, Anthony Davis, I mentioned the the stat line. Andy for for AD was ugly from an offensive standpoint. Twelve points for Anthony Davis in Game Four of the NBA playoffs in forty two uh, you know, minutes. Round. Yeah, in forty two minutes, four of 13. 13 shots is not very much. Um, Lakers, you know, sort of spread the field goals around. It was hard. It was hard to get a lot of shots in this game. Everything about this game was difficult. Um, neither team, Memphis lost the game by six, despite having 106 field goal attempts, the Lakers 94. Um, despite the fact they had, you know, the fact that the Lakers shot 28% from three point range, uh, the free throw battle was uh, tilted more toward the Lakers. Lakers got there 31 times, Memphis only got there 21 times. But, I mean, the numbers offensively in this game for both teams were so freaking ugly, which gives you an idea of just how how much of a grind this thing was. But um, it was it was a, a – let's talk about Anthony Davis and what this game was um, after the break because you could, as a Laker fan, look at this and say, WTF, how, how do you get this kind of performance? You could look at it and be – um, 
ad- admire the way he kind of grinded and came up with a couple big buckets late and still was engaged defensively. There are a lot of ways to break this down for somebody who triggers as many emotions in Lakers fans as Anthony Davis does. So let's do that next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks and Laker fans. If you haven't signed up yet for Prize Picks, you're missing out on daily fantasy made easy. Prize Picks has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. They offer more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator. They offer the superstar players, the bench players. Just pick two to six players and whether they will notch more or less than their Prize Picks stats projections, and you can win up to twenty-five times your money. And Prize Picks offers projections on everything from. MLB to the NHL playoffs to cricket. Use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Uh, safe, fast withdrawals. And for tonight's Game 5, Clippers and Suns, old friend Russell Westbrook, who's kind of charged right now with keeping the Clippers alive. Do you think he's going to get more or less than 25.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 8.5 assists? Norm Powell at 24 and a half. He's somebody that they need scoring uh, for the Clippers. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com. Sign up, play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. Again, the promo code locked on at the sign up for the instant match. If you're not playing Prize Picks, you don't know what you're missing. So, what did you think of, of AD? In this game, I kind of laid out before the break a, a, a few different perspectives that you certainly you were seeing from the uh, collective Lakers social media fan base watching this in real time. What were you? What was your? <laughs> They're always happy with AD over there. Yeah, they are. And those and corners of the world, super even keel, particularly <laughs> particularly during the playoffs. Like you know, yeah. no emotion, no emotional reactions at all from anyone. Uh, I mentioned, but that's that's part of it too. Is like you know, he, the game is emotional, but Anthony Davis just stirs up emotions in Lakers fans because of the history. I had mentioned the physicality at the top of the show. Like, I mean, this really was among the among the most physical playoff games I can recall in, in recent NBA playoff history. And I and I watch a lot of games, even the ones the Lakers aren't in. Um, and I thought the entire Lakers team took longer to adjust to the physicality and were bothered by the physicality for longer than Memphis. Um, but I don't think any Laker seemed more affected by it than AD. And I want to make it clear because there's always the, the undertone with this. I don't think AD shied away from the physicality at all. I don't think the Lakers shied away from the physicality at all. I think they were driving a lot. I think they were upset that they were not getting calls. A lot of times, I don't blame them. I think it was fairly non-called for either side. But some of these no calls were straight-up hacks. These are two teams, by the way, that... There, a lot of their offense is predicated on free throws. So both right. teams were trying really hard to get to the free throw line. Right. And AD, like I said, I think was very bothered by the physicality. And you can make, I think, a reasonable argument that he needs to adjust to it quicker and more effectively. But it's important to point out that's not playing soft. If you want to say right. he didn't play well enough, in the face of that physicality, that's fine because it's actually accurate. By definition, he didn't. But he did not play soft in this game. And I just – I think it's important to point that out just because I saw a lot of it, like you said, on our timeline at Cam Brothers on Twitter. And I, I just don't think that's what happened. No matter how yeah. badly you think AD or how uneven you think AD played in a lot of this game. I do think, though, that there is a valid there is a valid criticism, though, that the Lakers, whether it's what to whatever combination it is, Anthony Davis's fault versus Darvin Ham's fault versus his teammates' fault versus someone, uh, and and a, com- a combination of all of those things. However, you want to break it down, the the Lakers do have a problem where one of their two stars is too frequently, at least in this series, too frequently taken out of games. Um, and look, I think AD, who took a really hard fall in the first half and landed mm-hmm. on that hip, and that 
that was not one of those like Anthony Davis kind of rolls on the ground kind of timber sort of thing. This was like a hard fall. And I think he was bothered by that physically throughout most of the game. Um, it would not shock me if, um, and this is something we can get into you know, probably more for Wednesday, if he doesn't play in game five. Um, so you know, I think all of those things matter. It, it is a lot of things can be true at once, you know, like it is a problem. The Lakers have had trouble getting Davis going. It's a problem because you cannot rely on LeBron who was very tired in this game. Didn't have the step to, you know, to really even beat like Xavier Tillman off the dribble. Um, he got it when he needed it, but throughout most of the game, he really, LeBron really did struggle to create space for himself. Um, the supporting cast is obviously not so reliable uh, as a three point shooting group, as a whatever, like to be like the Anthony Davis needs to be excellent and still put up, you know, real numbers offensively and be a threat if the Lakers are going to advance in the playoffs because otherwise they're not going to put up enough points and LeBron is going to hit a wall. I mean, to but, be fair, but, I was going to say but, really quick, to be fair to AD, you know, Memphis is one of the most difficult teams in the league to score against inside uh, less than five feet. They're top five in the league in terms of, you know, opponent field goal percentage. I looked that up uh, after the all-star break just to try to, account for the absences of Steven Adams and Brandon Clark. And the answer is it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. They're, They're really, really good. And uh, yeah. this, this, this gets to a conversation I definitely want to have for Wednesday about the way people, I think, are looking at the Lakers and looking at moments in which the Grizzlies have been able to make progress. And, you know, they into a, you know, Lakers got off to a slow start on Monday. Memphis built up an early lead. The Lakers came. Jared back. Vanderbilt, by the way, of all people, kept them in this game early. He had 10 quick points. Yeah. Um, His two open corner Struggled three. after that. But well, was I think he was a little tuckered game. from guarding Ja. <laughs> he was. And I, I think he was that. And I just think, you know, he, he, this is another thing we can get into, I think, as, as the week goes on. And, you know, hopefully as the Lakers advance another round is – sort of the shortcomings of Vanderbilt as a, as a playoff player uh, in terms of how you can scheme with with him on the floor. Um, but save that. You know, it. Memphis is really good. And you're right. They have the ability to make life very difficult defensively for any player, but certainly Anthony Davis. And they're going out of their way. Yes, they are. ADM. To dare another, but this is the, the, the we talked about this going even going into the teams are going to make somebody other than Anthony Davis beat them. They, they were doing that against the Lakers down the stretch, and the Lakers struggled against it. Um, it's part of the reason, and this is something that I know you've been wanting to talk about more is that they're they're part of the reason they're not a good half court team is because they haven't solved that riddle of what do you do when teams overplay AD. But he had that huge put back tip in 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 the ot he found ways late to kind of be active and make important plays that were based on hustle and then were not based on you know getting set up for a dunk like working really hard and you know his game was imperfect but there was there was sort of something about the character of it that i think you can admire yeah. Even while acknowledging the the shortcomings offensively and 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 saying he he deserves at least some of the blame for it. Yeah. Again, he played extremely hard and he he did not shy away from that physicality of Jackson and Tillman and Roddy and Dylan Brooks and all you know, all these very you know, even Bain and Ja are physical players. For the Grizzlies, they're a really physical team. And AD was in the middle of it. This was not a question of him wanting no part of it, but he needs to find a way to be able to handle it better, you know, beyond what you had mentioned, that hip from that fall, whether or not it's bothering him or whatever. You know, a AD has had difficulty just getting to his spots mm -hmm. or being effective around the rim this entire series. And he needs to find a better way to do it. They, you know, his teammates need to find a better way to help him. But ultimately, you know, he needs to be the Lakers' best player in, in every series. And they need to make more shots. I mean, I, I really, you know, Memphis, other than game one, 
um, this Memphis is doing what you know our friends at Locked On Grizzlies said they would do in the, in the preview, which is conceding three pointers to the Lakers as they've conceded to every team they've played um, mm-hmm. throughout the season. And it, they should, based on what the Lakers have done in this series. And, um, you know, can they close out the Grizzlies without... Yeah, well, they're going to have three cracks at it, and they, they could still win. They've clearly shown they can win games without against this team without drilling three-pointers. But long-term, you cannot survive through the playoffs shooting 30% from three, shooting under 30% from three. Um, so the Lakers have to get better from there. But, Andy, I mean... I'm not a big. I, I don't. I am not a big uh, advocate in begging for style points in the playoffs. The Lakers are up three-one against the two seed in the West. They are not the the Lakers were not you know the the big favorite in this you know tr- trouncing teams all season long in the West and playing some measly little seven seed or eight seed. The Lakers are the seven seed, and they're up three to one against the two seed and so uh you take that however it comes uh plenty more to break down um on wednesday's show we'll get you uh, we'll get you ready for game five um i look i mean it's this is a, this was a this, <laughs> this is a game people are gonna remember for a while yep. um locked on liquors on youtube is where you can go to see the show and, and uh, hang out leave us some comments we'll try to use them for uh the next show tomorrow um reminder to the everydayers check back in we're gonna have great guests we're gonna have um you know a lot of analysis as long as this thing goes on and andy looks like it could go on at least for another round uh we'll see everybody wednesday